So you might be wondering, hey Tay, what are we gonna talk about today? I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna talk about today. So before I started this channel, I had only recently started reading again. That was late June, and then I decided, hey, I'm gonna keep myself accountable for reading by having this YouTube channel because I really want to continue reading. And if I don't have something to tie myself to, I will not feel guilty not reading. So to start reading, I did a challenge. The challenge was to read 50 pages every single day for 30 days, so essentially a month. Initially, I wanted to do 100 pages a day for two weeks, but I talked with a friend of mine, shout out to you, Mimi, and we decided that 50 pages every single day for a week sounded more sustainable than 100 days for two weeks. So that's what I did. I read a couple of books. Some of them I didn't finish within that time, but I finished later on. But in that challenge itself, I finished seven books. Seven. Does this look like a seven on the screen? I can't tell. This is like m mirrored for me. <laughs> but I finished seven books. So I'm just going to tell you about these books. Give little like reviews. Stuff I like, stuff I didn't like in just like short little sentences. Hopefully. A lot of these have tabs. But I have to tell you that I did not make a legend on what these tabs mean. So I just, I'm just kind of yellowing. And I'll also show you like a flip through of my annotations and my tabs if I have them. And yeah, most of them have, uh, have them, have tabs. And some of them have annotations. But there's only one book that doesn't have tabs or annotations. So let's get into it. I'm going to go from smallest book in like size to biggest book in size so it's nothing to do with how i read them like if i finish this book first and then i finish this one no it's not in that kind of order it's just based on size because i like to do that i think it's cute so first one is dorothy parker custard heart this is the fourth penguin modern book i got this book because at the back it talked about jazz age and i am very curious about the jazz age so i thought that this would be a good read but i was not exactly impressed with the writing i just think it didn't really resonate with me i found it hard to read but i do have a favorite short story in this and that is big blonde big blonde is my favorite but i wouldn't say that this was anything memorable to me and it was just a short read I give it a 3 out of 5. Next book is another small book by Penguin, but it is the Penguin Little Black Classics. And this is Oscar Wilde, Only Dull People Are Brilliant at Breakfast. So I got this book because I wanted a little snippet of Oscar Wilde before I started reading The Picture of Dorian Gray. And I was very, very pleased. This book doesn't have any, like notes that i made any like annotations they only have tabs and i did not make it a legend for those tabs but i think that most of them are just like quotes that i really really like or wanted to highlight inside that's the point of tabs right <laughs> but this book i really enjoyed it because i do enjoy musings I laughed a lot when I read this book, and it was really easy for me to read. So I, it got me really excited to read The Picture of Dorian Gray. I rated this book a 4 out of 5. Yes. Next book is a bigger book, and it's also about the Jazz Age. The very famous The Great Gatsby. Is it going to focus on the book? It is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So I'm not sure why I started reading this book out, of, book out of random, but I did. And I want to say that, like, it was okay reading it. I wasn't excited. I wasn't disappointed. I wasn't dreading. It was just okay. It was just okay. There's nothing really like striking about it to me. And by the halfway point, I was just like, okay, how is this going to end? And then the book ended and I was like, oh, okay. 
that's how it ended <laughs> so i gave this book a three out of five next book okay now i remember this was the first book that i finished in my challenge and that is good omens by terry pratchett and neil gaiman uh you can see how better the front is a little bit okay i might have different uh, a different definition of battered in comparison to other uh, people who read their books. But this, because the front is kind of like losing its plastic film. I, it won't focus. Okay. But I enjoyed this one so much. So a thing about the way that I tabbed this book is that I think this was the first time I really like tabbed and annotated. And I went crazy for this one. And up here, I usually tab the moments that I like really really love at the top and so this book this book is so good it's so good i enjoy reading it so much but i will have to say that i mostly like this book because of aziraphale and crowley the characters that i didn't really like that much were the sergeant and newt i i didn't really like them i kind of wanted to just skip their parts but i knew that like I just wanted to read the whole book in its entirety. But other than that, this book is great. I love reading it. It's witty. And I made a, I did a lot of annotation. You'll see a flip through when, when I'm like explaining this to you. And yeah, I rated this book either 4.5 or a 4. I don't remember. I think it's a 4. Editor me will put the score up over here. So don't you worry your little head. <laughs> wait let me just rearrange the books so that like they will look nice when i flip it upside down to have a little stack next book is jing 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 an absolutely remarkable thing by hank green you see this book this book and i have a history i bought this book back in january 2021 why did i say it like that I bought this book 2021, but it came a little late, so it came mid 2021, and I wanted it. I wanted it to be the first book that I read in 2021. But spoiler alert: I did not do that because the language is just a little bit hard to read. So the way that I read this was actually through audiobook, which is why you can see like not that many tabs. Okay, this is still a lot of tabs. And I'm going to show you a flip through. But I did not annotate this. I just tabbed it. And I really liked this book. I was going to make a review of it. But I kind of didn't like how I how I like spoke in the video. So I <laughs> that video was scrapped. Lost in existence. But I really enjoyed this book for its main character suffering nihilism and while i don't search up for sci-fi books usually this sci-fi book was really 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 enjoyable to me but all for the like for entirely different reasons other than sci-fi i don't know if that sentence made sense but that is the truth and so i rated this book a four out of five i four 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 point five out of five it's difficult to remember if i put a point five or not but I think it, I lost, I, I like scrapped out 0 0.5 because I couldn't read the book form. I had to listen to it on audio. So, But I still like read through it by like flipping through while the audio was playing. So That's what matters, right? Next book is actually a play. It's the story of the Iliad, a retelling by Simon Armitage. So this one. I don't know what goes on in the Iliad, so this is kind of like my first time learning about the whole story. Like, I've heard of the story before, but it's very vague descriptions and very vague plot. So, this was my first dive into the Iliad, just to get like an idea of what the Iliad really is about before I even attempt to dive into the original text. And I don't know if this is accurate, and I don't know how good this is, honestly, but for to me... I quite enjoyed reading it. I did not annotate this, but I did tab some parts that I kind of liked. And yeah, I give this book a 3 out of 5. Last book, 
this is the biggest book and coincidentally actually this is the fav- this is my favorite book that I read and it was Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman we have two Neil Gaiman books in the bunch so this book I I started reading it and then I was like oh no I'm going to I'm going to finish this I'm going to finish reading this really really fast and I re- and I tried to stop myself from reading too much too fast but then I realized that I can reread this anytime. I remembered the concept of rereading and I was like, okay, never mind. I'll just read as much as I want. And so I blasted through like over a hundred pages in a day. And I don't know if I meant to, but I'm really glad I did because I enjoyed this so much. I will definitely be rereading this in the future. I absolutely love the way Neil Gaiman like writes this prose for this Norse mythology. This was my first kind of exposure to real Norse mythology, aside from its TV, sh- t- like TV movie adaptations, and I really, really enjoyed it. I'm definitely gonna reread this, and I gave this a four out of five. So in the challenge, I read more than seven books but i finished seven books and this is the final like view of all the tabs that i did yay now i'm reading every single day isn't that a wonder isn't that a miracle i love it so much you should try it one day you can go for like a smaller goal maybe like 25 pages every day for maybe a week or two or you can do do it like me, 50 pages every day for a month. It's a bit hard, honestly. But, 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 if you want to kickstart your reading journey, uh, it's very recommended for me, honestly. You can also go for five minutes every single day. That's also really good. As long as you start just a little bit in reading, you're good to go, baby. And also feel no shame if it's like a little bit, tougher for you to finish a book because everyone kind of goes through that and you don't have to beat yourself over not being able to read uh, for like any reason like you don't have time or you just can't get through the content or you find it boring or difficult to like read or difficult to understand or process whatever it is don't feel bad because reading is just another form of entertainment and while it is a very good like tool and a very good resource it's definitely it does it definitely does not have to be associated with shame and guilt for not reading more you know you will get into reading if you want to get into reading and if you like reading that's the main that's the main point of reading that you like reading in the first place so here i encourage you if you want to start reading again do a reading challenge it it really helped me so i hope it will help you and That is all from me and my seven little books here. Bye.